uh, Dennis Hastert, he started out as a high school teacher of things like history and government as well as notoriously a wrestling coach at the Yorkville High School in Yorkville, Illinois, and that is just west of Chicago. So uh, Hastert worked at Yorkville High School for many years throughout the 60s and the 1970s, and um, as wrestling coach, he coached the um, state championship team of 1976. So um, we'll get back to that a little later, why that's important, but Hastert uh, started into politics in 1981, kind of by accident, he ended up becoming a state representative in Illinois, Republican. And uh, he did that for a little while. And then again, kind of by accident, he became a U.S., a national U.S. Uh, House of Representatives guy, I guess you would call it. Um, and that happened in 1987. And both of those were kind of unlikely things that just sort of happened. But um, in any case, his political career is growing here. Then in 1999, he again, kind of unexpectedly or kind of by surprise, he is the person who becomes the next Speaker of the House of Representatives, which is obviously a pretty, pretty big and important position, right? And um, again, there were other people who probably should have ended up in that position, but as it turned out, because those people were, you know, in some kind of scandal or they were considered to be difficult to work with, lots of different reasons, old Denny Hastert, as he was known, right, Denny, uh, he becomes the Speaker of the House, and he's very different than the previous Speaker, Mitch G Newt Gingrich, who was very, uh, Gingrich was very sort of, out there always talking screaming about something with a bullhorn right and Hastert had a had a much different way of operating he was calm he was kind of under the radar he wasn't always out in the news doing something right and uh, he tended to work in ways that were quiet he didn't ruffle a lot of feathers politically and uh, he tended to really toe the party line so as Speaker of the House, he did a couple of notable things. There's something called the Hastert Rule, which um, is, is just, it's basically kind of says, you only really bring things to a vote in the House if the party that controls the House really has um, a, a majority of their people in favor of, of the item. Uh, he also was uh, in, very instrumental in a revamp of Medicare and uh, he's also known as being heavy on earmarks or pork and barrel kind of spending. He was one of those guys who would attach a lot of unrelated stuff to legislation as a way of sort of, um, you know, getting favor from different, uh, different power sources, you might say. And that's one thing that you notice about Hastert is that even though he's, he's a low-key type of uh, politician, he seems to have some sort of liking for political power and the influence that comes with that power, as we'll see momentarily, uh, not just political power, but any kind of authority, right? And so um, Haster turns out to be the longest serving Speaker of the House in terms of Republicans in the history of the U.S. And uh, so served for, for a very long time, very close to George Bush, the, the younger. And then in uh, 2006, when the Republicans lost the House of Representatives, Hastert, of course, has to leave the speakership. And he decides at that time that he's going to just go ahead and leave Congress altogether. So really, that should have been it, right? We should have had a life here of... Denny Hastert, the guy who was kind of quiet and he was Speaker of the House longer than any other Republican, did some important things, knew some important people, and now he's off to the lobbying world, right, to be this lobbyist and use his influence. End of story. And he did become a lobbyist at a place called Dick Stein and Shapiro after leaving the House of Representatives, worked there for many years, of course using his influence as a former speaker to get things done, you might say. Yeah. And so, uh, 
everything seems pretty normal, right? This is the this is how things work. By the way, the Mexican border is right over there. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a fence. I'll tell you more about where we are a little later. Back to the story. Uh, in 2015, he's a lobbyist, and some stuff starts to come to light that will change the course of this story very dramatically. So Dennis Hastert comes under investigation because he'd been making some questionable money transfers that seemed, you know, kind of like they were designed to hide the fact that he was moving money and why is he doing this. So the FBI starts asking him some questions and he's not at first very forthcoming with his answers. And uh, long story short, they they decide to charge him with making some illegal money transfers and of course then people start asking, well, why is he transferring this money? What, what was the purpose of all of this, right? Well, guess what? Uh, he'd been making payments to a former uh, student of his or, or a former, uh, he had coached this person as the wrestling coach many years ago at Yorkville High School and uh, he had apparently privately agreed to pay this person several million dollars to uh, buy their silence in the fact that he had been molesting this, uh, this student at the high school and um, as it turned out, as, as things kind of went along, it, it turns out that he actually molested several of the boys on the wrestling team at Yorkville High School. So uh, this is quite a turn of events as you can imagine and for his wife and two kids I bet you it's quite a turn of events as well. So uh, Hastert, of course, then is, is brought in, into court and he basically is charged and convicted of illegal money transfers. The lying to FBI charge was actually dropped as part of the plea bargain. And uh, also as part of all of this, he then admits uh, in court that indeed he had molested this one this person that he was paying uh, hush money to as well as that he had apparently molested several other uh, boys from the wrestling team as well. So, uh, yeah, that's the main story there. The aftermath of all this is that Dennis Hastert was sentenced to 15 months in prison and again this was just for the illegal money transfers. The molestations uh, were something that was beyond the uh, statute of limitations so while he admitted to those things uh, he was not actually punished for them you might say. Uh, so he, he did 13 of his 15 month sentence. After leaving jail he loses his state teacher's pension. Imagine that. Congratulations for pulling that one. Uh, he also gets his state uh, his state pension pulled from the time when he was a representative in the Illinois State House. However, the American taxpayers continue to pay his pension for uh, his his uh, time in the U.S. House of Representatives, which is about $73,000 a year that you and I get to pick up. Now I want to tell you a little bit about the place that we're at today. I thought it'd be cool to do the story from somewhere from the Imperial Sand Dunes, otherwise known as the Algodonas Dunes, otherwise sometimes known as the Glamis Dunes. And again, the Mexican border is right there. That's the fence. And you can see a little bit of the sand here. It's very fine sand. There's much better places to be able to get a look at these dunes than this spot here. Um, the dunes themselves are not that impressive visually from this spot, but north of here you can really get some real nice, um, some nice views of these dunes. Uh, lots of Hollywood films have been uh, shot out here. So the other thing of note here, the main th reason I wanted to be here was that uh, inside of this little area here there is what they call the Plank Road and the Plank Road was the original wood road that went through these dunes and it was the only way really to get from like the San Diego area uh, to the Yuma area and, and Phoenix and such was on this Plank Road which is fenced in back here. This is just some examples of it that they found and moved here. Uh, you can see it was held together by metal, uh, what do you call those things? Long pieces of metal and then wood that these cars would drive on 
And in some areas, it would be a two-lane wood road so that, you know, cars could pass. In other areas, a one-lane road. And I can't get up to this, um, to this part of it because it's fenced off. But way down there where I parked, there is an example that we can actually get up close to and we can walk on it and all kinds of fun stuff. So you can also see that uh, people kind of park out here and then they drive OHVs, dune buggies, etc. Uh, all over this sand, just ripping Mother Nature a new one, right? Uh, so I mentioned earlier as I walked down to the plank, I mentioned earlier um, we also, we, so Hastert was a, pretty tightly uh, associated with George Bush the Younger in terms of his political uh, views and, and helping to get Bush's stuff done in Congress. Uh, but I mentioned some other Bush associates that are kind of nefarious as well, such as, guess who? None other than Ken Lay who has an amazing story, an amazing fall from grace as well. It might be as dramatic as uh, old Denny Hastert's fall, although it doesn't, to my knowledge, involve any kind of molestation. Um, and then, of course, also mentioned Lance Armstrong. That would be another really interesting story from somewhere. Lots of uh, twists and turns, ups and downs, and what have you. So we're coming up on the little part of the plank road that you can actually get close to. And uh, this plank road was built in the early 1900s. And I think it lasted for 10-ish, 15-ish, maybe even 20-ish years uh, until it was finally ended and they put in a real standard road that we think of today. But here is a little piece of the old plank road that I'm walking on right now. So that's the story of Denny Hastert. That's a little look at the Plank Road. Until next time, 